Crime Bites, the show where we talk about some truly bizarre and disturbing crime cases. My name is Liz and today is True Crime Tuesday. Today I'm going to tell you a love story gone wrong. So wrong. Horribly wrong. Anyways, this is the story of Gabe and Tina Watson. Let me throw a picture of them up here so you can see them. Look at how cute they are. Okay. So, Tina and Gabe met while attending college together in the University of Alabama in January 2001, on New Year's Eve to be exact. Gabe was described as a nice guy who could get along with anyone. Tina was a bright young lady who was described as someone who could light up just about any room that she walked into. Tina was a manager in a clothing store and Gabe was a bubble wrap salesperson. Their relationship, like any, wasn't perfect, but the couple got engaged on Easter of 2003 when Gabe did this cute little Easter egg hunt for Tina, and at the end she found the ring. Although she never technically said yes to his proposal, the couple got married on October 11th, 2003. They had a beautiful wedding in a Baptist church, followed by a reception at a lovely hotel in Birmingham. Now it's time for the honeymoon and the destination is Australia. So a key point in our story is Dave's passion for diving. He was a certified rescue diver and spent lots of his free time diving. Tina didn't really share his passion, but anxiously took lessons with Gabe on the weekends so that she could spend time with him. So Gabe's family got him a week long trip diving in the Great Barrier Reef for his graduation present. And the couple decided to extend that trip to two weeks and make it their honeymoon. So the first week they arrive in Australia and see all the sites such as the harbor, the opera house, the aquarium and the museum. And then it was time for the second week, which was Gabe's week and the couple was going diving. On October 21st, the couple flew to Townsville in Northern Queensland. The couple was going to be diving to see the SS Angola, a world famous shipwreck located in the Great Barrier Reef. It should be noted that this was an extremely difficult dive and usually a guide is recommended, but because Gabe was a rescue diver, the couple decided to go ahead and wave the guide. In the morning of October 22nd, Tina, Gabe, and four other divers enter the water and begin their dive. A few minutes later, Gabe and Tina resurface because Gabe is having some trouble with his dive computer, which basically keeps track of the dive, the depth, the heart rate, things like that. He plays around with it. And when he's satisfied that it's working again, the couple dive down again. And so after this, there are a few different versions and speculations about what exactly happened. But what can be agreed on is that Tina loses consciousness and starts sinking to the ocean floor. And Gabe, being an experienced rescue diver, does exactly what you would expect him to do. He swims to the surface. Hmm? So according to Gabe, he was not certified in the part of rescue diving that helps bring a person in distress to the surface. So rescue diver, I had to Google it just to be sure because you know the concept. So here we go. Wikipedia has this cute little chart I'll throw up here and here's rescue diver. Okay, the dive student learns to take responsibility for his buddy and how to rescue him. Huh. Anyway, Gabe rushes to the surface to get help. And one of the guides is able to retrieve Tina from the bottom of the ocean floor. And he brings her to a nearby ship to try to save her. But unfortunately, he is unsuccessful and she's pronounced dead at the site. So what happened? According to Gabe, while they were down there, they were constantly moving due to a current and Tina had motioned that she wanted to go back to this anchor line. When Gabe tried to assist her in that direction, she accidentally knocked off his air hose. It took him a minute to get it back on, but when he did, he looked for Tina and she was sinking to the ocean floor. 
at which point he rushed to the surface to get help. But when they pulled up Gabe's dive computer, they find he didn't exactly rush to the surface and some of the other divers claim to have seen him giving her a large bear hug before pushing her away right before she sank to the bottom. This picture taken by another diver chillingly captures her on the bottom of the ocean floor. How sad is that? Tina's death was ruled as a drowning, although there wasn't much water found in her lungs. There was also nothing wrong with any of Tina's equipment, which leads many people to believe that while Gabe was bear hugging Tina underwater, he was turning off her air and then waiting for her to pass out before turning it back on and letting her sink to the bottom of the ocean and then slowly swimming up to get help. There's a lot of very strange behavior on Gabe's end that would support this conclusion. Gabe was described as someone who could get along with everyone, but also was described as a control freak as far as his relationship with Tina was concerned. For example, in 2002 to 2003, he bought an engagement ring for her and put it in a bag on a shelf and she knew it was there, but he kind of just held it over her head and would tease her with it. When he was ready to propose, he asked Tina's dad over the phone. His dad said he needed to ask in person, but her dad actually never said yes. There are other weird stories about the couple, like Gabe throwing pizzas at Tina in a rage of jealousy, things like that. Here are some more things that don't make Gabe look too great in light of his wife's questionable death. He at first refused to go back to Australia to help with the investigation. Then he tried to collect traveler's insurance for his honeymoon gone bad for $45,000. He also exhumed her body and moved it without telling her family and then left her grave unmarked for six years. Then the flowers and cars that were getting left there were getting destroyed and disappearing. So police ended up putting up video cameras and caught Gabe with bolt cutters, destroying the memorials that her family would leave for her. He also remarried a woman named Kim Lewis, and well, look at them. He doesn't think she looks anything like Tina though. Apparently he knew her before and they had dated in high school, so that's pretty questionable as well. In 2008, Gabe was officially charged with murder in Australia. In 2009, he pled guilty to manslaughter and he only spent 18 months in prison. When he was released from prison, he was deported back to the United States, then immediately arrested when he landed because the state of Alabama was going to attempt to charge him with murder as well because they thought he was planning the murder long before they ever arrived in Australia. You see, the summer before they were married, Gabe tried to get Tina to have her father change her life insurance before the wedding to make him the sole beneficiary and to up the amount. This never happened, but Gabe didn't know that. Unfortunately, the evidence didn't end up being admitted because it was considered to be hearsay. And on February 23rd, 2012, Gabe was acquitted in Alabama due to a lack of evidence. Well, that's going to do it for today's story, but I do want to leave you on a more positive note. So here is a quick story about a man who took a much better approach to his diving activities than our friend Gabe and befriended an octopus off the shore of South Africa. Craig Foster found an octopus that bonded with him and allowed him to observe her life, which is really cool. Especially cool because these are known for being remarkable and very intelligent animals. Netflix actually made a documentary about it. It's called My Octopus Teacher, so that is definitely something worth checking out if this heartwarming story about an unlikely friendship interests you.
Well, thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked today's video, please be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think Gabe was just extremely unlucky and tragically lost his wife in a way where he just came off looking really bad? Or did he ruthlessly murder her for her insurance money? And please everybody stay safe out there. Bye.